get going here. Hi, everyone. This is Lee Bushness again. Um, welcome to our third webinar in the Agility Through Uncertainty Summer Chat Series. Today, we're going to hear from Holly Shramsky. She's an Associate Vice President of the Finance Division at the University of Georgia. Uh, AVAP Director O.C. Anderson will be facilitating the conversation today. Uh, O.C. is a supply chain management ERP leader with 16 plus years of experience. His areas of expertise include demand planning, supply planning, sales and operations planning, manufacturing, inventory management, and network optimization. OC is also experienced in implementing JD Edwards and Oracle value chain uh, planning. OC's industry experiences include higher education, manufacturing, consumer products, life sciences, and agri-farm. So I'm gonna hand it off to OC and let's get started. All right, Lee, thank you. Um, well, welcome everyone to our um, uh, webinar today. Um, first, I would like to introduce um, our speakers. Um, so today we have um, with us Holly Shramsky, and as Lee said, she serves as the Associate Vice President of the Finance Division at the University of Georgia. Prior to coming to UGA in 1993, she worked in public accounting. She works closely with her team on administrative systems to enhance and improve UGA business processes, and she also teaches accounting information system courses to undergraduate and graduate students in the J.M. Tull School of Accounting. Also with us today, we have Sean Hill. Sean serves as the Interim Director of Programs and Change Management at the University of Georgia. Prior to joining UGA in 2014, Sean spent more than a decade in the private sector leading various operations teams in a corporate office division. In his current role, he is responsible for business process improvement and change management for both the finance division and the office of research. And then finally, we have Brandon Silvers. Brandon serves as the senior IT manager for finance, uh, for the finance division at the University of Georgia. Prior to joining UGA in 2001, Brandon worked in the private sector, managing business software development teams. In his current leadership role, he is responsible for the oversight, management, and strategic direction of the finance division IT department with the emphasis toward data-driven automation tools for business process improvement. So welcome, welcome Holly, welcome Brandon. Um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so Holly, before we started UGA's business intelligence journey, your team was doing a lot of manual data processing and analysis in Excel. What was that like and why did you begin to think something needed to change? Well, good afternoon, OC. Um, let me say that we are in our beginning stages of our BI journey, but with the help of AVAP, uh, we've already developed a number of solutions in a very short time frame. And the more we do, the more things we put on our list that we want to do. So it's very exciting. I should note that UGA was also quite late to the ERP game. In 2016, we started a business transformation project. And by 2019, we were using totally new finance, HR payroll systems. And all of a sudden we had all of this data we had never dreamed of. So I distinctly recall one afternoon, our associate controller, she was working on our financial statements the very first year we were closing out. And she was very frustrated because Excel kept bombing out on her. Uh, well, I knew we were going to get to this point and needing to start to use other tools, but I didn't really expect to get there that, that early. So in, at that stage, we realized uh, that we were never going to evolve from being a transactional operation to being more analytical unless we stopped all of our manual processes and started automating things for our team. We were now so rich with data, we really needed to start using it and capitalize on it. And if we didn't act, we were going to leave our institution and our team members um, in the dust because we would not be effectively managing risk or making better decisions or even optimizing our resources. Awesome. Um, and because of these challenges, UGA decided to invest in Alteryx to help automate their financial spreadsheet analysis processes, which often involve taking files from different places, consolidating, cleansing, and outputting the final cleanse consolidated file to distribute to different parties. Did you feel like there was any pushback to this introduction of a new way of working? So I do recall a lot of blank faces when we first introduced Alteryx. Uh, there were plenty of tools on the market, so lots of tools we could choose from, but I knew of Alteryx the courses that I teach. So we needed to get started and we decided to start with Alteryx. 
Uh, once the staff could personally see what Alteryx could do for them, how it was automating their workflows, how it was cleaning their data, then all of those blank looks and questions really started to disappear and they began to see the value in the automation. Um, I would say if you're going to ex uh, start this journey, do expect some apprehension at the start. I first introduced the senior leadership team to this concept and after I had them on board, we found a small group of self starters people who liked to learn new things and who could personally gain from these tools and we teamed them up with AVAP. They identified projects to begin working and before I knew it, I was hearing them um, in the hallway. They were saying things like, now that I've automated my bank reconciliation process, I have got three extra days in the month. And as soon as I finish this next workflow, I'll be able to save another X number of hours. So they got very excited about this, um, started doing it on their own. AVAP was there to help them along the way and it became very rewarding to them. Awesome. Your, your team's adoption of the solutions is a testament to your leadership and being a champion for change. Um, do you think have any advice for university leaders who are facing change, whether it's new software solution or the uncertainty that lies ahead? So I've learned sometimes the hard way uh, how important it is to really understand why change creates concern for other people and to accept the fact that even sometimes the smallest amount of change can really rock someone's world. As Jim Collins puts it, leaders need to begin with the end in mind and make sure you explain to your team what is in it for them and why there is value in the change. Uh, we learned the importance of good change management when we were doing our ERP implementation and we worked with AVAP and a lot of us even became ProSci uh, certified in the ADCAR model. And ADCAR, if you're not familiar with it, is a change management model that gives uh, guidance for both individual and organizational change. It's ADKAR, um, awareness that we need to have a change, desire to support the change, uh, knowledge of how to change, ability to demonstrate skills and behaviors, and then reinforcement to make that change stick. And I really recommend using the ADCAR model, even for the smallest of changes, because it really does make a difference. And I would say as leaders, you need to carve out some time. Take the time yourself and with your team to understand what the change is all about and why it's valuable and engage them, the team to then do the same throughout the organization, have them um, maintain lists of ideas, even if they're crazy ones, so that you have things that you can pull on for your roadmap. And by talking about change like this more routinely, it makes it less scary. Um, engage your stakeholders early and often. Over communicate and create buy in at every level of the organization. Change can be hard, but there are ways to make it not so hard. Um, also, create a formal feedback process because people need to be um, heard. They want to be heard as they're going through these change and incorporate a feedback loop as well. Soliciting feedback with no response or no action to that feedback is worse than not soliciting the feedback at all. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, so along with being a leader in UGA's financial division, you are also a professor and teach your students about data and, and analytics. Um, I'm guessing many of us on the call did not have that opportunity in college. Um, what was the process for beginning to teach your students these skills? So in our accounting information systems and data analytics courses here at UGA, we focus a lot on the business process about um, the risks and the controls in the systems and the data that is created by these systems. Um, we try and develop the students critical thinking skills, uh, get them to the point where they're asking the right questions about the data, applying software tools so they can clean and analyze the data and then transform it into something that can be visualized and communicated to stakeholders. So back in 2016, when I first started teaching this course, we only used Excel and we tried to use it for the cleaning, the analysis and the visualization. But after um, listening to a lot of the uh, public accounting firms who tell us what the skills are that they are looking for in our graduates, we listen very closely to what they have to say. And based on that information, we started to transition and not only use Excel, but use tools like Tableau, Power BI, 
Altrix, UiPath for RPA and so forth. So um, we spend a lot of time teaching them about the ETL process. So extracting the data, transforming it, loading it. And for example, we have a case where they do that extract, transform, load exercise using Excel. And I watch them uh, sometimes with their fists in a, in a bunch that they're getting very frustrated by some really hairy Excel uh, formulas, but then we also show them how to do it in Altrix and the wow factor kicks in and they realize how easy it is to create something that is very repeatable. And because of my exposure to all of this in the classroom and teaching, uh, you know, graduates these skills that they're going to use in the workplace, I realized very quickly that in finance division at the university, we need to adopt these as well. Awesome. Um, so speaking of students, I know another phase of this project is the building of technical dashboards, um, such as the tuition and fee calculator, which helps students and their families estimate what students' bills might look like in each semester. Um, what do you think Tableau and data visualization is, um, is good? Is, why do you think Tableau and data visualization is a good tool for this? And can you explain what the tuition and fee calculator will do? So we are finishing up this product project right now. And like you say, it provides an online tool for students and their families to be able to estimate what their bill from the university might look like. So if you are familiar with tuition and fee structures and housing rates and dining rates and those sorts of things, then you know there are a lot of different factors that can create the student's bill. So by using the filter capabilities in Tableau, um, the student can select the parameters that are pertinent to them. In-state tuition, out-of-state tuition, the number of hours they plan to register for, um, what room type of uh, setup they might be looking for, single or double, double occupancy and so forth. Then they can just select those items using Tableau and get their estimated bill. And if they want to make some changes and see how it impacts their pocketbook, then they can do that quite easily. Uh, Tableau really does provide a very user-friendly interface. It's very interactive for the user and also pleasing to look at. Do you think using Alteryx and Tableau is scalable for other areas of UGA? Yes, absolutely. So we can definitely use it within finance division centrally, but over um, this very short period of time, uh, we've seen plenty of applications to apply Tableau in a number of areas throughout the institution. And I'm going to ask Sean now to share some of those things that we have produced that not only help us centrally, but in a distributed manner as well. Thanks, Holly. That's right. We're using Tableau or Alteryx or a combination of both in a variety of different areas. Um, in fact, we've developed a fairly long request list at this point as more and more people start to see the value and recognize the power of these tools. Um, right now, for example, UGA is, is using these tools to show grant balances and burn rates. We're using it for capital projects. Um, we're using it for processing time trends and metrics like revenue, deposits, purchase orders, payment requests, things like that outside of the finance arena. We're using these tools to analyze rankings data, facilities data. A lot of work has been done in the area of student data analytics. Um, you know, as you know, in higher ed, you know, understanding student behavioral and performance patterns is really integral to our ability to stay nimble and to make the correct decisions. Uh, another example, um, UGA is using Tableau, and this one's pretty timely, UGA is using Tableau to conduct facilities analysis um, to plan for social distancing measures this fall. Um, and in each dashboard that we build, we try to make a conscious effort to ensure that it can be useful to as broad an audience as possible, um, <clears throat> which often includes both central and distributed offices. Um, so today I'd like to try to share my screen and show a few examples um, that we've developed within really the past 18 months or in some cases the past two or three months. And actually in the audience here, I see the architect behind uh, a lot of, of the reports that I'm going to show you today, Andrew Westbrook. This guy is a legitimate wizard. This just scratches the surface for uh, what he's been able to develop that's added tremendous value for our, our institution. So let me try to share my screen here. And all right. Can everybody see that now? Yes, we can. Right, thank you. 
All right, so the first dashboard here is a, a trend analysis, year-over-year -year trend analysis um, dashboard. We have this for, uh, so far, six different financial metrics. The one I'm displaying here is revenue. Um, so if you look in the top left, you can see year-over-year -year trends. So um, total revenue and then the numbers in the green and red show um, how we're trending year-to-date, quarter-to-date, or month-to-date against this point in the last fiscal year. You move to the right of that, you'll see a month over month analysis, just current fiscal year versus last fiscal year. Um, bottom left, uh, it's kind of a similar concept, but it's showing the cumulatives over the, uh, the course of the year. So how we're trending that way. Um, and then in the bottom right, you're able to see kind of different fund sources. So we've grouped it together to say, how are these fund sources uh, performing from a revenue standpoint um, year over year? There in the top right, you'll see there are a variety of filters so that people can uh, filter down to various departments or filter by a specific fund source if they want to see it that way, um, and then drill in and see a little bit more detail. Um, so you can see, I think, um, the value that this kind of tool can have um, for anyone from senior leaders to people across the organization and our ability to correctly interpret data and make good decisions based on these data. If I move to the next slide, um, here is one uh, where we're trying to get a better handle on our key performance indicators, um, our KPIs. So this is a processing time for expense reports. Um, we're doing this for a variety of different transaction types. So here, if I just start at the top, it'll show you things like the total number of expense reports we've had, the total number of actions um, that it's taken to get each one of these expense reports paid. And that's important, especially for people like me uh, who care about you know, process um, improvement, because we're able to determine how efficient the process is and where the bottlenecks are in the process to really start having the conversations that we need to have to say, how can we make this run more effectively or more efficiently? Um, in the next column over is the average time to approve an expense report and how that compares to the institution. So if somebody says, I want to see how my department does against the rest of the institution, and if it's significantly longer, then I can start asking questions like, well, what could we do differently? What are other people doing differently that we might want to apply in our work area. Um, the next section down is outliers. So if you want to you know, you can see many of them are clustered in that, uh, you know, two to eight day time frame. But then you see some of these outliers on the edge. Someone might want to drill. You can actually click on those little red dots and drill into each individual outlier and say, what are the details behind this? What happened here? What's, you know, some of the complaints you might find. I'm sure those on this call have recognized Sometimes the people who speak the loudest don't necessarily represent the majority, but they still end up costing your team a lot of time. So it's important to understand how those edge cases come about because these are going to be people that are dissatisfied with the process and say, this isn't working at all. Whereas you might be able to point to 95% oh, of them are falling in this time frame, but some of these happened and this is why. Um, below that, it shows the time by workflow step. So um, you know, if one of these things was submitted, how long did it take each step to approve, how many of them were there um, in each one of those steps, and then there's the ability, to, again, to filter down by department, that type of thing. If I move on to the next dashboard, this is one of these balanced dashboards I mentioned. We had uh, this particular example is we wanted to look at grant balances. Um, so we have the ability to see budget, encumbrances, actual spending, and available balance. Uh, we have some data visualization here. So in that donut chart there, you can see the, um, that those columns also represented the ability to filter down by different fund types. Um, what I've, the screenshot I've included at the bottom here, this burn rate, was a particularly interesting concept that came directly from faculty feedback. They've said, you know, I really want to see how I'm spending against my project budget. A lot of these faculty projects, as you probably know, are uh, not months long, but year long projects. So, you know, we might have a five year project and they want to see how am I spending against that. I want to make sure I'm not spending too quickly and I want to make sure I'm not spending too slowly. So, um, you know, this shows how they're spending against that project timeline. So that's been very useful. Um, finally, the example um, here that I'm showing is a service level dashboard. So we're asking our teams to set service level objectives, identify a few key goals. What are the most important goals? And if we're doing these things well, we know we're most likely doing a good job as a team. Um, and so we define those and uh, we want 
X percentage of these things, these transactions to be done within Y percent, Y amount of time. Um, so, you know, that's where the arrows are pointing here. We've set this dashboard up so that we can say, I want to see how many, this is particular one is for a ticketing system. So how many tickets are resolved within 120 hours? Um, and it'll show that corresponding percentage. And we made this flexible enough so that we could say, well, I want to know how many are done within 24 hours and see how that percentage changes. Down at the bottom <clears throat> kind of gives you visualization by the assignment group to say how many of these were done within the service level objective and how many were outside of the service level objective. And then you can drill down further to see the details for those that were outside, for example, to see why that might be. So, you know, as you see these tools start to evolve, you know, you can, I think, probably understand why more and more people want to get in line to say, I can understand how this will add value to our ability to do our business more effectively and more efficiently. So it's been very exciting for us and really a lot of this is in its infancy. So I'm excited to see where it goes from here. All right. Thank you, Sean, for sharing with us uh, those dashboards. Um, Holly, what benefits are you already starting to see with this project? Definitely seeing the benefit of some time savings. Our staff are realizing that they can do less manual tasks and repurpose their work. Um, we're also starting to experience more ease with decision making, right? Um, we have a lot of really smart people working for us, but they were at a disadvantage when they didn't have this data and at their fingertips. So having this, this dashboard allows them to get to that decision making very quickly. We are also shifting to a more proactive culture and these dashboards are actually going to allow us to start delegating uh, throughout our organization. So hopefully we will be able to experience more autonomous management several level downs in, in the organization. And I want to ask Brandon to share another thing that we are seeing in this project. Uh, this gives us a great opportunity to provide some experiential learning for our students. And he oversees a student team that actually helps us build these. Yes, we currently have three students involved with building Alteryx workflows and Tableau dashboards. The students have been um, had some experience with these tools through Holly's class, but have been really big self starters to learn even more. AVAP has helped with some training materials and serves as a great resource to the student team. As our finance leadership identifies projects, their staff does not always have the time or resources to build the solution. So our student team serves as that manpower and allows us to complete more projects. At the same time, this provides the students with some experiential learning and they can see how businesses like their clients of the future can really benefit from these tools. They also gain experience working with functional users and subject matter experts and also must follow our testing and quality control standards. So they're learning from those requirements as well. All right. Thank you, Brandon. It's always exciting to hear the students um, have an opportunity to get involved um, with some of our projects. Um, Holly, our, our summer chat series is about being agile through uncertainty. How has using data and analytics allowed your team to be more agile? Well, certainly because we invested some time in this over the last nine months or so, uh, we are finding ourselves in a position where we can put these things together much more quickly. Um, we are very decentralized here at the University of Georgia, so having self-service tools plays a big role in being effective and efficient. Um, Sean mentioned that we like to design these tools so that we can look at them institutionally, but also provide a solution so that departmentally someone can look at the specifics as it applies to them. And we're um, involving central and distributed users in the design of these so that when we're ready to deliver them, hopefully they have the most immediate value possible. Uh, when we design good self-service tools, it also helps take a load off of the central offices uh, because sometimes it does require a lot of support to help people with this um, data and information along the way. Um, so one quick example that we're getting ready to deploy um, is around travel data and like many institutions, we're only doing essential travel right now that needs to be approved. So while the systems can collect all of the data, we need quick, easy ways for management to be able to see that information and being able to deploy something like this will really be a big help. 
Awesome. So Holly, before we wrap up, um, what would you say is your number one piece of advice for university leaders as they face the unknown? So I think it's going to be really, really important to move yourself to a place where you are more comfortable with uncertainty and that you're able to face it with confidence. And one way to do this is to take some time um, and create an inventory about maybe what these last few months have really taught you. Uh, take the time to ask yourself these questions and sit down with your team and ask these questions and determine what successes you've had or even what missteps you've had and how can you learn from those experiences so that you can make an even stronger team. Um, reflecting on these experiences and taking the stock of, of all the talents of your teams will be a great way to not only acknowledge what they can do, but also make plans for what we are facing here in the future. I had a very smart individual say to me earlier this week that we are all in this really unique opportunity to almost reinvent ourselves. And so taking the time to have that inventory of what we've learned and then going ahead and taking action on it will be really important. All right. Um, well, Holly, Sean, Brandon, thank you for um, joining us today. Um, Vanessa, if you are ready, we are, I think we can open it up for a few questions. We have a few minutes uh, remaining. Great. Thank you all so much. So feel free to send your questions in through the chat box or the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Um, we did have a few questions come in, so we'll go ahead and get started with those. So the first question is, have you been able to use any of these tools to help UGA in their response to the coronavirus pandemic? Holly, do you want to take that one or do you want me to? Well, Sean, um, Share what you had mentioned a little bit earlier about the facility space and what the sure. um, Office of Institutional Research is doing. So thanks for that question, Bruce. Great that I saw you on the panelist list and uh, that was always, it was good to see your name. Um, yes, so the Office of Institutional Research has been using the uh, Tableau in order to look at square footage and seating capacity so that we can determine how to um, you know, how effectively we can maintain social distancing and what kind of processes we need to put in place to ensure the safety of our students, faculty, and staff. Great, thank you, Sean. All right, the next question says, what is one leadership tip you have found useful when implementing a new technology with your team? So I'm gonna go back and give a plug to the ADCAR model you know, taking a look at that and um, start with what your end result really wants to, to look like. Uh, but being able to describe to the team why making that change is really going to be valuable to them. You know, we all as human beings tend to look, look at it very personally, what's in it for me. And I've learned sometimes the hard way you know, you really have to look at it from their vantage point and get them clued in with you as to the value of the change. Great, thank you so much, Holly. Um, it looks like we're coming up on 1.30, so um, thank you all again so much. And to all of the attendees, if you registered for today's webinar, um, you will receive a recording of it um, that you can also share with your colleagues. So thank you so much. I don't know if OC, you have anything you wanted to say before we wrap up? Um, yeah, yes, thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, everyone who's worked on this um, summer chat series. It's been um, very well done, very well executed. And thank you, Holly, Sean, and Brandon, um, and the whole team at the University of Georgia. We uh, really appreciate um, you sharing your stories with us. Um, and then last but not least, I don't know if they're on the call, but I do want to give a shout out to Nago, Jason, and Stacy, who have really put in a lot of great work um, with UGA and helping with the, um, with the alters and Tableau tools. Um, they've been um, phenomenal. Um, I think that's all I have. Great, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.